он хоть бы пугать. Вот он. Я уйду тихо, ни к чему оваться. Заметил чью-то тень краем взгляда. И острая коса мелькает где-то рядом. Жду апокалипсис. Номер 60. Парафин гейм. Это как... Like a video game, really. It's like so you got like a, one or more ships next to each other. It's like a sort of a pirate boarding sort of game. So every every team's got three captains, uh, some bosuns and a crew, and you're trying to get across to the other boat, trying to kick their heads in. Yeah, you're trying to amass as many victory points as possible. I think eight victory points and you win. Yeah, this is uh, just based on what they say on the back. It's like a a mob or something, I don't know what they mean by that, I don't really play video games, but yeah, this is massive, there's, there's so much in this game, I mean, you could go on and on forever with the amount of characters that are in it, and it's got some really detailed miniatures, but it's still a good game, very quick, very simple, easy peasy, not the bones. And I-59 is, uh, oh, this is uh, Zion, what's the uh, Legends of the Drift system, it's like a so a, they call it a sandbox sort of game, but I don't know. You can sort of do what you want, but you're sort of guided by missions that you pick up and all sorts of different stuff. So yeah, you've got like a modular board. You take different loads and loads of different actions, and that depends on the points you've got on your ship that you can use. Yeah, it's a bit, it's like a bit merry trashy, but I really like this one because you, you never really know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's got again, it's got some really, really good miniatures in it. And the expansion that came out this year it's really pushed it forward so yeah so our lessons of the drift system uh, number 58 is a uh, escape curse of the temple this is one of the first games that sort of popularized the sort of real time game so originally you get like a cd mp3 time on this and uh i can't remember five minutes i think the game lasts but you're still stuck in this temple you've got to, you've got to get in and get out with as much treasure as you can but if the thing is if it's because it's a co cooperative game everyone's got to get out and if one person's left behind then everybody loses but mate i'll tell you just give you a heart attack this one it's really really fantastic yeah yeah heart attack of the box number 57 is uh quite a recent one so it's beautiful circus it's like a Dexterity game. Yeah, with this one, you've got, you've got little, little wooden meeples representing all sort of different circus animals, circus acts. And, uh, every every game, random cards come out, and they tell you what the audience are looking for when you have a performance. So, in the first few rounds, you're all playing together at the same time, not cooperatively, separately, but you're all playing together at the same time. And in the last round, the spotlight is on you only. <laughs> yeah, I've seen people get the old shaking Stevens when they play this one. Luke. Okay, number 56 is Cash and Dance. It plays up to eight players now, I've been with a couple of expansions, but this is the only legal way that you can point a gun at somebody and get away with it. So, uh, yeah, it's like the scene out of Reservoir Dogs, you know, at the end, they're all pointing their gun at each other and uh, they all pull the trigger. But yeah. And this one comes with like a sort of foam guns, yeah, and you can uh, you basically sort of threaten to blow people away with a, with a toy gun, and it don't get much better than that at a party, especially if there's people there you don't really like. Code number 55 is the old horse racing game long shot. Yeah, we really like this one, this is, uh, this is great. You're sort of buying horses, and then you're racing the horses, but you don't really know whether your horse is going to come in or not, based on the way you bet on the horses. You can bet on your horse, or you can bet on another horse. It's one of the best horse racing games out there, I think. If not the best. Currently out of print, I'm pretty sure they're reprinted. 54 is uh, 1812, the invasion of Canada. This plays up to five people. It's better with five, but you can play it with, uh, I suppose, with two, three, or four. And uh, yeah, this simulates the uh, 1812 invasion of Canada. So you got uh, it's basically sort of rolling dice, 
playing cards from your hand to take actions based on the territory you're in. So if, if you want to move across water, you've got to play a boat card. And if you want to move across land, you've got to play an adventure card. But the, 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 the Native Americans in this are sort of on the fence as to who they support. So, I think shut up and sit down. I said this looks really boring, but it's actually hilarious. And it's probably, probably spot on with that one. Yeah. It's not so much a war game, it's more like sort of an area control game, but it's, it's really, really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. All right, number 53 is the old venerable pandemic. Probably a lot of people's favourite game of all time, probably. But yeah, it's just, this is a good game. Very, very difficult to win. Basically, trying to con contain outbreak of viruses across the world. Everyone's got a special ability. It's a frantic, frantic race against time to, to stop the world getting consumed by by bacteria. This is a, a lot of people say this is the one that brought them into board games, but I don't know. Yeah, still, it's a classic. Number fifty-two. Who's fifty-two? Yeah, number 52 is, uh, is Ethnos by uh, one of my favourite designers, Paolo Mori. This one is uh, sort of like a set collection area control game. Sort of some people say it suffers from really shit artwork, but I don't know, it sort of fits the theme. But yeah, you get points based on uh, how much control you've got in each area. And you're drawing, you're drawing cards out of the stack, and uh, you can either play a set of cards and get rid of all your cards, or you can hold on to them. It changes every game, there's different loads and those are different factions, probably really needs an expansion, Mr. Rory. It's about time you sorted that one out. Number 51 is uh, Ticket to Ride, this is Ticket to Ride Europe. Probably our best, the best one we've got. But yeah, you can play any of these tickets, just the new to get ride. Or uh, we've got some maps down here. I can't remember which ones are. Oh, but yeah, I mean, this is like. One of the most popular board games ever made. You're just uh, it's like a map of Europe, different routes from, say, I don't know, Paris to Salzburg. And uh, at the beginning of the game, you're given out these cards with these routes that you've got to complete. And all you're doing is putting these little plastic trains down on the map. So, on each spot. So, you're trying to connect your trains to the routes. And at the end of the game, you get points based on the longest route. And during the game, you get points based on how long the routes that you connect are. It's it's absurdly simple once the moon we created it it's just uh, apparently did it on a, on a dining table or something bizarre every night yeah but it's sold millions of copies and uh, whilst it's not the the deepest or most strategic game on, the, on, on this list it's uh, one of the most fun <laughs> Thank you.